1973 would see the release of hit film The Exorcist, in which a 12-year-old girl is possessed by a demon, and two priests attempt to rid the child of the possession. A year later, in West Yorkshire, England, a real-life exorcism would take place and fail with disastrous consequences. Michael Taylor was a 31-year-old man living in the market town of Oset with his wife Christine. Taylor worked as a butcher, which is foreshadowing. Michael Taylor belonged to a Christian fellowship group, which is kind of like a book club, I think, only there's one book and it's generally frowned upon if you don't have a glowing review for it. It was here Taylor developed strange mannerisms, including speaking in tongues. The leader of this group was Mary Robinson. Taylor's wife, Christine, revealed to the group that Michael's interest in Robinson was sexually driven. Think he might have misunderstood the nature of these types of groups, or uh, fuck, maybe I've misunderstood the nature of these types of groups. Taylor did indeed admit to feeling evil inside and would eventually attack Robinson verbally. Robinson described a wild bestial look overtaking Taylor's face and feared she would have been killed in the incident had it not been for the intervention of Jesus. Taylor's behavior would become increasingly erratic after this until the group came to the conclusion that Taylor's behavior was a result of him being diabolically afflicted and that there was only one way to free him and get the old Michael Taylor back. The local vicar called in other ministers he knew to be experienced in deliverance to cast out demons in Michael Taylor. Enter Father Peter Vincent, an Anglican priest who would head up the exorcism, and Reverend Raymond, a Methodist clergyman who would assist him. The exorcism would be performed in St. Thames Church in Barnsley on the night of the 5th of October 1974. In an all-night ceremony, the men invoked and cast out at least 40 demons. Jesus, leave some for the rest of us. Among these were incest, bestiality, blasphemy, and lewdness. The exorcism rite lasted until 6 a.m., totally exhausting the priests. They allowed Taylor to go home, but feared at least three demons still remained. Insanity, violence, and murder. Those seem like three pretty important demons. Like, surely you should have prioritized those ones? Like, at the very least, you should have got rid of murder. That's pretty serious. Like, couldn't you have maybe swapped bestiality and murder there? Was it really more important to get rid of bestiality instead of murder? Well, he might kill someone, but at least he won't suck a dog's dick. Imagine a mechanic gave you your car back and said, okay, so I fixed the left taillight, the broken mirror, and the crack in the windscreen. The brakes still don't work, but I think you're good to go. A mere two hours after the exorcism, Michael Taylor would fly into a ferocious rage. Neighbours described a fit of laughter and joy emanating from the Taylor household, but what they did not know was Michael had viciously attacked Christine. With his bare hands, Michael tore her eyes and tongue out and almost ripped her entire face off. He left the house, but not before strangling their poodle. Police found Michael aimlessly wandering the streets, naked and covered in blood. He was maniacally shouting, it is the blood of Satan, over and over again. They would soon find the mutilated bodies of his wife and their dog lying in pools of blood in the floor of their home. At his trial in March, Taylor was acquitted on the grounds of insanity. He spent two years in Broadmoor Hospital before being sent to a secure ward in Bradford for another two years. Michael Taylor was then released. In the years following, Michael Taylor would attempt suicide on at least four occasions until in 2005 when he would find himself in court again, this time for the indecent touching of an underage girl. A week into his prison sentence for the crime, Taylor began to exhibit the same strange behavior he did before his wife's murder. When brought back before the court, they again ordered him into a psychiatric treatment. I was unable to find out where Michael Taylor is as of time of recording.